We can now bring in Justin Robert Young, host of the Politics, Politics, Politics podcast, Yai Co, an internet law expert and Lionel, legal and media analyst. Thank you all for joining us on the programme this evening. Uh, first question to Justin, please. Um, what do you think is big tech's motive here and, and what's the end game? Well, for them, there are, are two things. Number one, obviously, they want to protect their share price, and they want to protect the fact that they are an advertising platform. Remember, all of these services live to sell ads. They don't live to do anything else. Uh, secondarily, obviously, they know which way the wind is blowing. Donald Trump is no longer going to be in the White House. Almost all of these companies face antitrust suits that are going to be decided by the Biden Department of Justice. And so now there is going to be less of a priority to, to maybe make these arguments arguments internally that Donald Trump and his account should be protected. But these are self-interested actors, first and foremost. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you think that these tech giants have become too powerful? And is this a trend that can be reversed? And how? They have become too powerful. It is, it is obvious that they are now controlling uh, pretty much the, the entire communication system all over the world, which is unprecedented. Uh, what uh, will uh, happen eventually, uh, they, we, we are going to see uh, at least uh, some backlash because it will be a matter of time before censorship will be moved on to other part of uh, perhaps the Democratic Party. Uh, remember, the Democratic Party is made out of, of, of many different uh, uh, factions. Uh, so it is only a matter of time before one or two of them are going to be perhaps considered as uh, too uh, extreme uh, too, uh, or perhaps uh, too, too communist or too fascist or too something, uh, and we will be seeing uh, further bans and censorship, uh, at the end of, of which I think social media companies will lose all credibility uh, and uh, people will effectively uh, revolt by, by moving on, moving to other uh, type of social medias. Perhaps you will see the creation of a different type of social media in the future. Uh, Lionel, the Democrats are mostly cheering on this anti-Trump crackdown online, but should they also be worried that a handful of companies have so much power? <laughs> well, they should be. Uh, that would make sense if they did. But the problem is this. I'm a practicing lawyer, and I'm going to tell you right now that the law, American law, always lags 25 to 50 years behind technology. Now, let me give you this example. We always talk about the Internet, and we talk about platforms and social media. Imagine this. One day you're on your mobile phone, and you say something, and your call drops. And you pick it up again, and you say the same thing, and your call drops. And it turns out that your internet provider or your phone company decides that it does not like the particular type of speech that you are enunciating on your phone. And you say, wait a minute, this is a utility. Ah, well, what's the internet? That's just a private company. It's just these kids, man bund, kind of young nerdy types in Silicon Valley who put together this thing and, well, if you want to do your own, go someplace else. This it means that we have to rewrite the First Amendment in this country because this is a, quote, private company that 99% of all the people on the planet use. Our laws are outdated. And unless that is changed, nothing will change, at least in this country. Uh, sticking with you, Lionel, for now, um, in the latest twist, uh, Twitter has condemned the government of Uganda for allegedly blocking Internet service providers. Let's just take a listen. <laughs> Ahead of the Ugandan election, we are hearing reports that intranet service providers are being ordered to block social media and messaging apps. We strongly condemn internet shutdowns. They are hugely harmful, violate basic human rights and the principles of the open internet. So that's the word from Twitter. Uh, what do you make of that, uh, Lionel? Um, hypocrisy? Hypocrisy? They have elephantine... Um, yeah, in order to do that, it, it boggles the mind where they can say that with a straight face. Look, the thing is, is that we, we all know it's not that they're too big, it's they're too draconian. Let me say something very quickly. They just won an election. They're going to see how far they can push this. This is a stress test to see how far the law will go, how, law pe how, how much people will tolerate, and they're going to go as far as they can because they're drunk with power, like it engorged a tick that is filled with blood, just can't get enough of this. So where it ends, who knows?
Uh, Justin, a next question for you. Um, if companies like Twitter, Facebook and Amazon can do this to their own president, could they do it anywhere in the world to any government they don't like? Oh, certainly so. Uh, uh, they, they, the, the largest problems within these companies is that there really is no actual basis for which they are operating. The, the, there is no Bible. There is no constitution. There is no, their terms of service are often edited and malleable. And even then subject vague enough to be subject to the whims of internal discussions within the company. The ethos of Silicon Valley, where I am based here in Oakland, California, at least the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, is move fast and break things. It is absolutely antithetical to the idea that they are going to have hard and fast rules that are understandable by their users. And so we can all say, OK, well, this line is crossed. And in the absence of that, that means that everything is possible up to and including banning uh, leaders throughout the world and here in America. A uh, question for Yair, please. Let's uh, try to look on the bright side here. Could something good come out of this? Could we see more alternatives to Twitter, Facebook, Google, gain more popularity, perhaps? Absolutely. There is going to be a lot of good uh, uh, coming out of this. Uh, first, uh, we can see that the... Uh, that, 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 that those internet giants are being ex exposed for all they actually are. They are being exposed for what they are really after. Uh, interesting, uh, this, this, is, this is Twitter's with the, uh, um, a mission statement, uh, uh, to give everyone the power to create and share ideas and information instantly without barriers. Now, people used to believe this. People used to believe that, that uh, Twitter's uh, goal was to serve absolutely everyone, to give everyone an opportunity, and to, um, to let people uh, express themselves without barriers. Does anyone believe that anymore? I don't think so. Uh, so this is one good thing. It is always better to know than not to know. The next uh, a good thing that will happen, I think, is that we will see the internet evolving. Uh, we are going to move to internet stage four, where there will be a different type of internet company, different type of social media. There, is, there will uh, be a different uh, business model arising. I'm not sure yet what it is, uh, but uh, something will change very dramatically uh, because I just don't see how this, uh, uh, this, this situation can be sustainable uh, for, for much longer. Uh, Lionel, um, when social media platforms were created, do you think the creators intended it to end like this with massive bans and censorship? Of course, absolutely. Look, one of these days we're going to find out that this, this, this fraudulent story about these kids, these nerdy kids who came up with the, the idea, there was so much involvement in not only private equity, but in government-sponsored equity, in QTEL and others. We have our own DARPA. You're going to find out that there were, that basically, one could argue, they're almost like silent partners of the government. The idea that they just existed on their own, independently, and that goes for Amazon and all these huge corporations. And so right now you have this device that I bring into my home that you can listen to and follow me and know everything about it. I mean, this is if, if, if George Orwell were here now, 1984, this idea of people voluntarily standing in long queues to purchase their own surveillance information, I mean, m machinery, I mean, this, this is a world nobody ever imagined. This was never intended to be good. This isn't like some kind of a scrapbook that we keep. This was one of the biggest cons that we fell into hook, line, and sinker. Mm, and Justin, the, the uh, Russian-made messaging app Telegram has seen a surge in popularity in recent days. 5.6 million downloads since Wednesday, in fact. That's due to people ditching WhatsApp, which is owned by Facebook. In fact, Turkey's President Erdogan has just joined Telegram as well. Is that an encouraging sign, you think? <laughs> to be honest, uh, uh, WhatsApp's decline has little to do with anything that happened in the Capitol on Wednesday, but rather an announcement by Facebook that they would begin injecting ads, which is something that they promised from the acquisition of WhatsApp that they would never do. Uh, uh, again, 
uh, with all with all respect to to, to our, our my fellow panel mate Lionel about this being the greatest con in history, this is the greatest sales job in history. The the all of these platforms redefine the concept of advertising, not only online but also in terms of display and television. All of it is ravaged for the sake of Facebook, Google, and Twitter. Uh, uh, so. Uh, Yes, rising social media is going to be a benefit. The question that I have is, are we now bifurcating the internet? Are we going to totally self-select from the point of adolescence or before or to be handed down by our parents to our children that we now only go on social networks and only interact with people and that are only hosted on servers that either are liberal or conservative or possibly even more extreme versions of that? It, that, to me, is a, a, a dystopic vision that I think is, is, is something that is closer today uh, than uh, I've ever known it in my lifetime. And Lionel, we uh, mentioned QAnon, which supports Donald Trump. Uh, Twitter has suspended 70,000 accounts of the movement's followers. Uh, do you think they pose any real threat? Does the Internet pose any threat? QAnon. The, or... QAnon. Well, the idea is that if you are deemed to be a part of a conspiracy theory that for some reason, uh, whatever reason given, is verboten, that's it. So whether it does or doesn't, whether anybody understands it, who, I mean, who knows? The point is, is that how interestingly immediate people will say, oh, okay, we love to call people conspiracy theorists. If you question 9-11, you're a truther. If you had any questions about President Obama, where he was from, you're a birther. If you question anything, you are an er. We take whatever you have that we don't like and we call it a conspiracy theory. Don't forget the words of Gore Vidal. He said, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a conspiracy analyst. So that is just the buzzword that just people will start nodding and say, OK, sure, it must be bad. But conspiracy theories are basically ideas that somebody doesn't like or understand. A final question for Yaya, please. Uh, clearly, there has to be some kind of moderation. Uh, no one is suggesting terror, propaganda or abusive images should be allowed on the Internet, in, on social media. But who decides where the line should be drawn? Well, well, this is a difficult one uh, for me in particular because I've been advocating for many, many years for for some form of, form of, of internet policing or for moderation, but I'm really acting on behalf of the little man and woman uh, who have been uh, victimized by, by, by internet posts. Uh, and, and, and the interesting thing, again, is that, is that uh, th th this is the, the, the UK Select Committee talking about Twitter, uh, saying that the, the Twitter was, was effectively responsible for inciting, promoting terrorism, killing uh, 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 people effectively, uh, not, not cooperating with governments in that respect. Um, and, 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 and Twitter replied back then was, well, you know, uh, we, we are here to, to provide the platform. We're not here to moderate. Now, the question, who should be moderating? Perhaps the answer is there should be a form of moderation, but it needs to be uh, transparent. So internet companies, uh, say social media companies, will need to be transparent. They might need to have people who are independent, uh, neutral, sitting on the boards, sitting on those committees that decide what is acceptable, what is not acceptable as a minimum a requirement. Um, the, the state of affairs at the moment, that we don't know who, who makes those moderations and who makes those decisions, uh, is not going to be uh, certainly acceptable. Uh, the alternative, of course, is a massive government intervention, which I think we are seeing European leaders uh, becoming extremely uncomfortable uh, with uh, the current uh, state of affairs. They don't like it. It reminds them dark days in the 1930s and the 1940s, uh, where very few had uh, uh, far too much control over information. And with that control, they were able to influence the hearts and minds of good people otherwise. Uh, and, and the rest, of course, as they say, is history. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us on RT International this evening. We've been speaking to Justin Robert Young, host of the Politics, Politics, Politics podcast, Yaya Cohen, internet law expert, and Lionel Legal and media analyst. Thank you. Thank you.